Hello and welcome back. So today I'm actually going to give a recap of my 2011 27-inch iMac. Stay tuned, I'm going to show you how it's performed over the last six months or so. Alright, so this is the first time watching my videos, you may not know this, but this is actually a 2011 iMac I bought it used for about 300 bucks online, 280 actually, 27 inch. And I installed a, uh, it's one of those Lacey, the orange uh, Thunderbolt drives, and I actually boot the OS off of that. So it's booting off an SSD drive, and I'm going to show you some numbers in that in a second as well. But basically, it's a, you know, I'm going to show you how it performs after three or four months of, you know, use and how, you know, I edit my videos on this thing. I do a lot of work on it and things like that. So definitely stay tuned and we're going to go through how it performs and give you some examples. All right. So if you guys haven't watched a lot of my videos, you know, this is a 2000, uh, 2011 iMac 27 inch. I bought it for about 280 bucks, which is an incredible deal. It said grade C. It's actually more like a grade B, if even that. There's not, a, not even a scratch on the screen. Um, but then what I did is I actually got one of those Lacey, the orange uh, Thunderbolt uh, hard drives. I ripped it open, put it an SSD, a, a Samsung Evo in there, and I booted off and I put the OS on that. Now I boot off that, the external drive. So I went from the spinning drive 5400 to an SSD drive. Did that right away and I got up to like three to four hundred megabits per second on the reads and writes. So if you don't know how to do that, I actually have, I'm going to do it in my description, my first video. Be kind to me, it was my very first video on a cell phone. Um, but I do show you how to take that thing apart and actually boot off the OS, you know, boot your OS off of that on this machine. It makes a world of difference. I highly recommend it. In fact, if you don't do it, you know, you're going to be running on a 5400 drive. It's not going to be a good, you know, it's not going to be good for you as far as like video editing and, and various things like that. But when you, once you make that conversion, the machine just opens up and it's as fast as any, any machines nowadays. All right, so how do I test this thing? A couple little tests, and these are not going to be scientific. I'm not going to be running like scientific benchmarks and things. But uh, this is a good story, actually. I went to the Apple store the other day and the, the brand new IMAX, you know, the ones that are sitting out in Best Buy and things like that. I walked up to one of them. It's brand new 2018-2019 iMac um, and also the 2000 MacBook Pros, 2018-2019 um, MacBook Pros. Uh, let's start there, actually. So I went up to the MacBook Pro and I actually, you know, clicked on iMovie. And, you know, like the little beach ball that actually bounces a couple times, you know, even in this day and age, it takes two to three to four bounces before iMovie opens up. And I don't know why. This is a brand new system. Um, and just waiting for it was kind of like concerning to me. This is a brand new system at Best Buy. I know that, you know, people fool around with those sometimes. But then I tried the iMac there, same thing, three to four bounces to get before the program loads. This system, after this is the 2011 iMac, I, I boot off the SSD, which is a Samsung Evo, and it usually takes one bounce on the in opening up iMac, no, I'm sorry, iMovie. I know that's not really a scientific test, but it's about three to four times faster to open it up. And I have, you know, hundreds of videos in there where these, these other systems don't have any videos. And there's no, like, um, you know, people haven't created a lot of video in there. Not that that makes a huge difference, but it does have to load that first screen. So I don't know what's going on with those new systems. They have way faster flash drives. They have way faster everything else. But it just seems like this system kind of powers through those things a little bit better, just from my experience. And like I said before, the SSD drive that I use actually is the, uh, it's a Samsung Evo in there, and it's basically connected through a 10 gigabit per second Thunderbolt connection. And I have a bunch of videos on this, but I just wanted to kind of give you a recap after, you know, a couple months of use. And it's important to get a good SSD. Some people, you know, every once in a while, I, don't, I have, you know, a lot of people that have tried this. I think just only two people it didn't work for. It might be because of they're using kind of an off-brand hard drive or something, or they don't actually format it correctly. But if you do, see, you know, I would recommend just getting a good drive, and you know, especially like an Evo for like you know 240 gig for like what 50 bucks now, 60 bucks. Throw it in the uh, the Lacey external Thunderbolt connection. You're going to get that 350 to 380 to 400 megabits per second, and uh, the system at that point just opens up and it's super fast. And I'm actually going to go ahead to, um, on the system here, I'm going to go ahead and run some black magic tests for you just to show you that again. And again, this is after use and heavy use, mind you. I, I've used this computer quite a bit since I've actually, uh, you know, bought it, a, you know, maybe four or five months ago. And I uh, just want to show people kind of that, you know, you know, obviously with Windows systems and things like that, sometimes it can degrade if you do a lot of, um, you know, stuff on the system. Uh, this one doesn't really have any problems whatsoever so far. Anyways, just to recap too, I got this at a place called iCell IMAX. I'll put, I'll definitely put the link maybe right up here right now. Um, but basically, it's a system that I, I, you know, it's a place that I went to. I found just out of the blue. They grade the systems, you know, A, B, C. I ended up getting a C, which said it should have some, maybe a couple scratches, um, possibly in the screen and on the back for sure. 
Um, basically, at my back, I have a few like little teeny black marks. The screen is pretty much flawless. I mean, there's no really marks. It's perfectly clear as far as the, you know, the, the screen itself, the brightness. Um, there might be a little grains of dust maybe on the corners, but, but that's about all I can see in it. So I think it's a great bee that they shipped me, and it was $285 uh, for a 27-inch 2011 iMac. I go on there now, and I can't find them for that cheap, but I, I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and ultimately it came up, and then once it came up, I actually just kind of pounced on it and bought it. Um, they do give you pictures of everything, so I mean, every once in a while I see from iSell iMax, number one, they give discounts. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, just FYI, I'm not, I'm getting, getting nothing from them. But they do run, um, you know, discounts that's about 15 or 20% off every once in a while that help. I think I had that discount. Um, but beyond that, I couldn't believe the price, so I just said, what, you know, what the hell, the screen's basically going to be worth, um, you know, way more than that anyway. So if it lasts me a couple years, it does. I mean, that's the only thing you have to worry about is basically the cooling and things like that. All right, so you guys ready? Let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is my 2011 iMac that I bought for under $300. Granted, I did install the SSD drive, um, which is uh, basically through a Thunderbolt 10 gigabit connection through Lacey, an external you know, drive. I boot, off, I boot the OS off of that external drive. It makes it this thing lightning fast. So anyways, I'm also recording this just in case you guys don't know from the QuickTime player. You can do screen recordings. I do have a video on that. Uh, you guys can find that video under my... I have like 40 videos, but you can find that there. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So iMovie... Down here, take a look down here. So, um, you know, definitely keep your eye down here on the iMovie. I'm going to tell you when I'm going to click it, and you're going to see how fast this opens up. Definitely, it's booting off that SSD, and it's going to be lightning fast, even faster than I've seen than some of the newer systems. All right, here we go. One, two, three. There it is. So basically, not only does it launch, but it launches all my videos you see that I've made here. Um, you know, a whole bunch of different movies in here that I've made, and it had to load all those movies. It bounced once or twice. Again, it's, been, it's bouncing a lot more on some of the newer systems, and uh, it's pretty incredible how uh, fast this thing is actually uh, performs. Um, I'm going to go into a video that I actually just made recently, and I do investing videos as well, just FYI. But if you click on a video and you want to actually get into the video, um, you can go ahead and see... Uh, definitely look how fast. So I'm basically going to be scrubbing through this. This is 1080p video. It's kind of a funny video to scrub through, but you can see that there's basically no lag whatsoever. Look at this. So the video production is very, very smooth. You know, it basically doesn't drop any frames. You can go frame by frame. If I click on something, you know, I can go very, very quickly like this. I'm actually, sorry about the noise there. I'm actually clicking the, the forward button. That's a great scene to stop on. <laughs> um, anyways, so basically that, you know, here is super, super fast. And, uh, you know, obviously it, there's no problems whatsoever. I haven't done 4K yet. Um, so keep that in mind that with 4K video editing, it's going to be a different story. Um, but uh, right now this is actually performs really, really well. And again, I don't, you know, I'm not a power user by any stretch, but you can see how many videos I have here. It's a ton of them. So this thing has to kind of open up all these and, and deal with a lot of different videos. So I'm going to go ahead and quit that. So that's iMovie. So Chrome's another one down here that actually a lot of people use. I mean, I, again, I'm not a power user. I use, like to use the things that you know, everyone else likes to use. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. One, two, three. There we go. Chrome is up. It's loaded. And it, what did that take? A couple seconds. I'm going to go ahead and close some of my comments up here before I get myself in trouble. And uh, But basically that's you know super, super fast. We're going to go ahead and quick Chrome here, and we're going to do it one more time. One, two, three. That was one bounce, if even that. Um, so let's go to ESPN.com. We go to a website. Um, two seconds, it loads. Look at that. Um, you know, everything's really fast, it's very responsive. And uh, you can basically, obviously, it depends on, on your internet and things like that. All right, let's go ahead and do another popular video. I mean, foxnews.com, cnn.com, we can try a couple different ones. But you can see how fast things are actually going to load. And as you scroll down, you can see how fast things load in. So um, for a system like this, you know, you can have multiple tabs open. We got CNN open over here. Um, you know, just a really, really fast system. This is the Internet, uh, obviously, just using Chrome in a browser like that. So I'm going to go ahead and quit Chrome. Obviously, if you're an Apple user, you might use Safari. I really don't use a lot of it. Um, a lot of people do, but I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Here it is down here. So we got one, two, three. One bounce. There it is. It's open. Um, we can go ahead and click on Google, and we're in. So super fast, super responsive, nothing, nothing laggy about this system at all. So I'm going to go ahead and 
go ahead and Safari. I'm going to quit Safari and get rid of that. So like I said, I've done this a few times, obviously. I mean, I don't want to kind of repeat myself because um, I don't have a ton of programs that I use really on here that much. Um, some of the other programs that I do use, though, I just opened up the wrong one there. Sorry. Good thing it opens up quickly. Um, but I do use stuff like Keynote. Here's Keynote. I just clicked on it, and basically, boom, it's open. And let's go ahead and choose a presentation right here and it's open. So obviously things in here are super quick as well. Um, you know, you can do anything that you want as far as adding shapes and, and you know, everything's super, super, super fast. Um, text editing, things like that. I've used this a ton for all my little taglines on YouTube. Everything's super, super fast on this as well. So there's Keynote. We're gonna go ahead and quit that. Delete that and it's done. So, all right, so let me go ahead and click on Photos down here. Um, here's Photos, One Bounce. And look at that, it loads this, not only does it load this, this is a wedding, but it loads 2,222 2, photos this quickly. This is a wedding, and it's amazing how quickly this can render all these photos because of that SSD drive. Um, super, super quick, uh, you know, there I am getting married, so you guys can laugh a little bit. Uh, but basically, it's super fast, again, all those images it has to parse through 20 something hundred of them, it instantly opens up in about one or two seconds. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and quit the photos here, and that's that. Um, obviously, maps, everything else is really quick, so there's not re any reason to go through that. Um, the one thing I did want to show everyone is really quickly the black magic again. Here's the speed test. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. So that's after about um, six months of use because I only have a 240 gig drive. I'm actually using about half of it or maybe even 60%. So it's quite filled actually. So we'll see if there's any speed degradation now from the original test I did. And again, I'm booting off that Thunderbolt SSD drive on a 10 gig connection. So it's an external SSD. I have the OS installed on that. Keep that in mind, this is not the spinning drive. And uh, I have a, you know, in the description, I'll put a link to how to do that. But do not use the spinning drive, the 5400 drive, or you will have a terrible experience. This is what you want to do, boot off the external, and this system becomes beautiful. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and click speed test right now. I clicked it. You can see on the rights, they're right about where they were, um, about 354, somewhere in that range on the right side, 348 actually. Um, and then basically on the reads, we're up to, and I've seen a little bit higher. Um, this is up to about three, I'll get pushing 380 right now. I've seen it like 384, somewhere in that range. Um, it's going to do another test here. So um, you can kind of see the speed tests on different sizes, uh, but it's basically going to be uh, leaps and bounds faster than the actual spinning drive. And uh, you can go ahead and see the reads again are going to be in that 370, somewhere in that range. So, so let's go ahead and close this. All right, so basically that's all I really wanted to show people today was just how this performs. Um, it's a great system. It works really, really well. Um, anything you want to open up, like maps, anything at all. I mean, not only, like, you know, I have a fairly fast internet, internet connection, but the programs open up so fast, it's unbelievable. Obviously, this is going to depend on your internet connection, you know, how you can actually zoom in uh, and how fast this loads over here. But still, it has something to do with CPU in some cases as well. Um, but it's, you know, we, you get very little lag with anything. And you can see, you know, as I open up more and more windows, um, there's Chrome, there's Safari, still fast. Um, you know, I do have, uh, let's go back into Keynote. It's open. So basically, you can open up all these different types of apps. Uh, let's do iMovie 1, 2, 2 bounces, it's up. And it's going to load all my content, which is tons of videos. So now I got iMovie up, and I'm going to quit out of that. I got Keynote up, I'm going to quit out of that. I got Safari up, I'm going to quit out of that. I got Maps up, I'm going to quit out of that. And then I also got some other things. I got Chrome up, and I'm going to go ahead and quit out of that. And so you can see, I mean, basically, it is, you know, unless you're going crazy to have 100 tabs open, it's just as good as a brand new system. I recommend it. Try to get one for about 300 bucks, 27 inch, 2011. Boot to the SSD drive. Make sure that's the key. That was what made this thing turn around. And uh, it's like a brand new system. Look at that screen. It's beautiful. The screen's incredible. Um, and you can't do any better than this. So after about five months, basically, I've had no problems whatsoever. Everything loads still really fast. Um, you know, opening up things like Chrome and things like that, Safari is, is lightning fast, usually one second. Um, I've only used iMovie just because I'm kind of learning the whole system, and uh, I just wanted to test it for a little while, so I'm going to do Final Cut Pro pretty soon. 
um, and let you guys know how that goes also. But iMovie works flawlessly. I mean, obviously, I'm not doing 4K yet on this. I'm just doing the 1080p. Never had a problem, never even had a crash on it, never had anything like that. So, um, And I do some edits, some some uh, transitions and things like that, but I'm not like a huge, huge heavy, you know, obviously you can see my videos. I'm not doing tons of special effects and stuff. So, um, But take it with a grain of salt because that's obviously, um, you know, all you need if you're doing what I'm doing. All right, so basically my review after about four to five months, somewhere in that range, I can't remember exactly. Um, I'm gonna give it a five out of five stars right now. Spent, you know, I did spend 285 bucks, like I said. I also spent around, I think it was like 100 and something on the drive and the actual uh, Lacey. I mean, the Lacey uh, Thunderbolt drives you have to pick up. Um, usually on eBay, uh, they can get pretty expensive because you have to rip out the uh, spinning drive and then put the, you know, you have to buy an uh, SSD drive to put in there. But I found them for about 70 bucks. They usually go new for like 180 bucks, somewhere in that range, quite a bit, because it's got the 10 gig Thunderbolt connection. I actually found them for like 80 bucks, um, 70 bucks, somewhere in that range. If you look hard enough again, you gotta wait, 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 and when one comes open, you know, maybe the packaging's a little ripped or something, grab it, um, buy it, and then rip it open. Uh, I have a video on that again, it'll be in the description. And then go ahead and uh, finish to do it, you know, putting in the SSD drive, and then you gotta boot the whole S through it, the OS through it. Uh, but that's about it. Oh yeah, the only really caveat I've had so far was, you know, booting off the SSD drive like I have. Um, there was one day where I actually had an update for the OS, and when I did it, it actually, and I turned the system back on, I tried to boot back to the original disk, which is still in there, which is the spinning drive. Um, and so I had to kind of figure out how to reboot back to the SSD drive, and it's pretty easy, obviously, I know how to do that. It's just that it didn't seem like it worked. I thought for a second there was going to be a problem, and then it came back. I knew I didn't, you know, I knew I had both systems. I mean, basically, you can boot off of either the original drive that's in there, because it's still there. I mean, the OS is still on there and everything like that. I just kind of use it as a backup, or you can boot off the SSD, but once you get it set, you know, it should boot off the SSD all the time, which it does. And, uh, but at this time it didn't, and I, you know, waited after I did the update, but I ended up figuring it out, and I don't even know what I did, but I think it was just booting off the SSD again. That was the only problem I've had so far. Anyways, guys, so this is actually, um, you know, probably my 40th or 50th video. Um, definitely if you guys can support me and hopefully click the like button and also the subscribe button Just trying to get my subscriber list built up so I can continue to do this um, It's you know a lot of work to make these things and I just want to make sure that I actually obviously get up Maybe to hopefully the thousand subscriber mark one day um, Anything you guys can do to help um, I'll keep making them um, I don't usually make about two a week So I'll get you know, I'll see you guys next week It's either gonna be on finance or it's gonna be on the IT side which usually is the Mac so talk to you soon